And I'm speaking now very directly to parents who have children dealing with autism, to families who are dealing with it, and to children who are dealing with autism. Why? Because it's all about inclusion today. And I'm very I'm privileged to have Kirsten Flores join us, the deputy principal of a fantastic school, the Vera School for Learners with Autism, and Ashley Wagner will join us on the line just now from Little Leaps. We've also done incredible work. Thank you so much for joining us. This, this is the one day of the year where you get to stand on the rooftops, literally, and shout out your message. Well, talk to us a little bit first about autism. How much do we know about it? How much do the public know about it? What is the message that you want to send today? Uh, um, at morning, morning. <laughs> uh, morning, South Africa. Um, we've come a long way. Um, many years ago, when I started in the field 18 years ago, there was not much known about autism. People frowned about, upon it. Um, I think people are much more aware of it. As a result of the greater awareness of autism, now we still have a compounded problem because of a lack of facilities. Now people want to have their children being, um, intervention needs to be done and all those type of things. So the next step after the awareness is now to the intervention and the appropriate interventions as well. So it adds an, uh, even more importance to days like today where we, we need some of that corporate social responsibility funding exactly. to be pumped into I this I don't area. think government can do it alone. No, we definitely need it. And this is something that falls on the, the shoulders of the family most often. Now, yes. if we go to step one, when identifying a child that may have autism, and I know there are varying degrees of it, what are those signs? What are those, those first alarm bells? Look, I'm not going to go technical, but basically there are four main things that stand out. And the first thing that one would look at is the language and communication aspect of it. Um, how they communicate with other people. Um, some have speech, some don't have speech, and some repeat whatever you say. And then you have the impairment in social relatedness. Um, how they socialize with others. And you can imagine a, ch a child with autism. Oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It happens to all of us, man. It happens to all of us. Um, how press they snooze relate? There, press how, snooze, yeah. Yeah. So, so how they relate, sorry. How they relate to others on a playground or anywhere else, um, or even their parents. Then they have um, the narrow and rigid pat patterns of thought. Um, and that is often where they have great difficulty in. Um, if you talk about a, a topic, any topic, they will come back to what their obsession would be or special interest. Um, and then the last thing that people often don't get and that they often miss is the sensory difficulties that they have um, with regard to food textures, um, temperatures, um, air oh, temperatures, noises, yeah. auditory sensitivity, visual se sensitivity. The lights here might be too sensitive um, um, and too overwhelming for some of our children. It puts the, the role of a caregiver in a whole different light as well. Yeah. The extent that you have to go to, and we, we're very lucky to have joining us on the line now, Ashley Wagner, founder of Little Leap School for Autism. Ashley, a very good morning. Good morning, how are you? Very good, thanks. We know, Ashley, that you guys are doing incredible work um, within Little Leap School. Talk to us a little bit about how you approach, obviously, the treatment and the, and the very intensive care of children dealing with autism. Okay, so as you've heard from Kirsten, every child's autism is so, so unique. Um, this creates their own very specific and individual needs that um, we need to keep in mind before we even begin the teaching process. Um, we at Little Leaps, as I'm sure it is the same at Vera, um, design developmental programs like IEPs, which stands for Individual Educational Programs for Every Learner. Um, here we assess what the child is capable of first, and then like as a starting point and then we make targets and adjust the curriculum so that the child can succeed in every learning area. Um, this way of teaching is obviously very different to the mainstream <laughs> way of teaching. Um, let me give you a quick example. Let's say for instance we're teaching shapes in the classroom. One child in my class can, tell, can only match a yellow circle to a yellow circle whereas another child in the same class can, can tell me how many sides a hexagon has got. So can you understand, we can't teach shapes on a whole to the whole class. <laughs> um, the national curriculum is also adapted to focus on language, social skills, life skills, and sensory development. No. So yeah, besides the IEPs, um, we've got staff that are beamed down from heaven, and other treatments include like on-site speech and language therapy and occupational therapy, sensory integration, that kind of thing. 
it really takes a whole team of people to teach one autistic child. Um, and you guys really do do an amazing work in that area. And we know that the children, once they've been diagnosed, really do um, get the care that they warrant. And I, I'm going to put this very quickly to, to both of you. What, what is your advice to parents dealing with autism? Because we know that's often the most challenging part. Very quickly, Ashley. My, my, my plea today is just to hang in there. I promise you it gets better, it gets easier. Um, you are your child's only voice and advocate. So even if it doesn't feel like it today, they appreciate you, I promise, and so do I. Uh, well, we appreciate you. Thank you, Ashley. We're going to let you go there. Keris, I'm going to put that question to you as well. What, what should parents do? What's their first step, and, and how should they approach I it? I completely agree with Ashley with the fact that Parents should be the advocates for their parents because their the parents can't, the children can't speak up for yeah. themselves. In the Western Cape, and I'm talking from the education department's point of view, especially in the Western Cape, get your child's name on the Western Cape Education's waiting list. That is the first step because there we determine what is the most appropriate placement for your child um, at which school. Because all children diagnosed with autism do not have to come to a school for a autism. Specialist school, yeah. Because, like Ashley said, there's a spectrum of autism. So get your child's name on the waiting list so that we can determine what is the most appropriate um, placement course, for yeah. your child. And then also parents. Our school, Vera School, started out by was started out by parents. It's not government that's going to start these things. Parents need to lobby, advocate, fight for the rights of their children, and also continue the journey. There are many professionals who are willing to walk this journey with you as a family. At our school, we don't only work with the parents, we work with the children, we work with the parents as, as well. well. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, I'm absolutely blown away by how you guys work in this field. I know you're a busy man, you've got people beating down your door, phoning you every five <laughs> minutes. We're going to let Garrison go now, but to all of our parents, please, if you would like any more information on this, there are resources available. Check out our Facebook page for those right now, though, time for the news.